our daily encounters with wildlife enrich our lives. Sustainable wildlife populations are vital components of a healthy environment. However, as urban areas expand and our demand for agricultural products increases, remaining rural areas are under intense pressure to meet and balance the needs of man and nature. Sustaining a healthy environment is increasingly linked to decisions of private landowners like agricultural producers. Our farmers are stewards of many of America's most important natural resources. However, agricultural practices have intensified due to increased demand for food and fiber products and advanced farming technology. The result has been farm consolidation, larger fields, monocultural production, loss of idle fields, conversion of native grasslands and wetlands, and a reduction in overall landscape diversity. In short, the environment has been simplified and there are fewer places for wildlife to exist and thrive. As a result, some grass and farmland wildlife species like the bobwhite quail are slowly disappearing from the landscape. Over the last three decades, bobwhite quail populations have declined by more than 70%. So how do we balance the increasing demand for food and fiber with the need for improved wildlife habitat? Like most Americans, agricultural producers value wildlife and are interested in improving wildlife habitat. The key to increasing their interest in habitat improvement is to develop conservation practices that can be implemented without compromising agricultural production goals. These conservation practices must be easily integrated into production systems. They should also achieve multiple environmental benefits and improve whole farm profitability. The use of conservation buffers is a practice that meets all of these criteria. Conservation buffers are strips of land maintained in permanent vegetation. They're designed to trap pollutants, reduce water and wind erosion, create wildlife habitat, and provide other environmental benefits. In August 2004, in an effort to encourage further development of wildlife habitat on agricultural lands, President George W. Bush announced a new conservation initiative. Secondly, we're going to expand the conservation program to cover vital grasslands that often serve as borders of farmlands. As part of his Northern Bobwhite Quail Habitat Initiative, President Bush introduced a new continuous CRP practice called Habitat Buffers for Upland Birds. This new CRP practice, known as CP33, allows producers to establish native grasses and legumes in 30 to 120 foot buffers around crop fields. These buffers provide nesting and brood rearing habitat for bobwhite quail and other farmland wildlife. Producers are reimbursed 90% of establishment cost and receive a $100 per acre signing incentive plus an annual rental payment to offset lost production. The buffers increase whole farm profitability by replacing less productive land with a conservation practice that includes economic incentives. Given the environmental and economic benefits, habitat buffers are common sense conservation that producers are readily adopting. In the first year of availability, agricultural producers in 35 states have enrolled more than 66,000 acres in upland habitat buffers. To learn more about the CP33 practice, we talked with producers from North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, and Mississippi who are currently participating in this conservation program. Jimmy Pate has been actively farming since 1973. He grows soybeans, corn, tobacco, and cotton on 1,600 acres in Robeson County, North Carolina. Ira Rainwater has farmed for nearly 20 years. He grows soybeans, corn, and winter wheat on 100 acres in Florence County, South Carolina. Lamar Black grows cotton, corn, soybeans, and wheat on 950 acres in Jenkins and Burke counties in eastern Georgia. 
Lamar has been farming for more than 40 years and since 1993 has planted 100% of his crops in conservation tillage. Jimmy Bryan farms 5,000 acres in Clay County, Mississippi. 1,200 acres are planted in corn and soybeans and the remaining acreage supports a cow-calf operation. Jimmy has been farming for more than 45 years. Here are their stories in their own words. I chose to put the conservation program on my farm and the quail buffers because I'm conservation oriented. I've tried to implement every program that I can possibly sign up for to improve wildlife habitat for quail and other animals, as well as, of course, the incentives of doing that. Four years ago, the North Carolina Wildlife Resources Commission started a quail rehabilitation program. When I heard about it, we decided to try it, knowing that the quail population had declined like it had in this area. Not only have these practices benefited the quail population, but they've also benefited the songbird population as well as the rabbit and other small wildlife. We chose to add field buffers to our farming operation because we wanted to increase wildlife habitat, particularly for bump white quail and also songbirds, rabbits, turkey. All of them benefit from a field buffer. And there are some incentives out there for, uh, for establishing these field buffers. So it's not a negative income for the farm. Uh, and then, then, of course, the big plus is the increase in wildlife that we have on the farm. So I realized to have quail, we had to go back to the way we were in the 50s. What we found out is we'd taken away all the habitat, all the nesting area, and birds had nowhere to raise. So, we started in taking out a little land and putting it in the warm season grasses on some hillsides and some other small plots to uh, provide nesting area. And we immediately saw some benefit from that. Then CP33 comes along and it's just a perfect fit for what we're trying to do. We, got, uh, we get fair compensation in, the, uh, uh, in establishing the program and the rent. We get erosion control. We get habitat for birds and we're building what we want for the future to pass on to our children and grandchildren and preserve nature that was. Our weed buffers have not contributed to any weed problem in the row crops or insect problems in the row crops. Uh, there's some thinking that maybe our field buffers may actually enable us to control insects in our crop easier because the field buffers is a habitat for not only the bad guy insects, but the beneficial insects. And so if we got the beneficial insects in the field borders, when the bad insects come to our field crops, we got beneficials that move in too, and they help control the bad insects. Field borders do not interfere with the operation because they're along the edges of the woods. We've seen no increase in insect pressure or weed pressure from the field borders. The quail program and the buffers have not uh, interfered with our farming progress here in South Carolina, and particularly on my farm. I have not seen any significant weed invasion in my crop fields as a result of the quail buffers. We have uh, herbicide-friendly crops now that we plant, and I don't feel that weed invasion would be any problem in the future. I've heard some people voice concern about the weeds around the field creating problems in the crops. But based on our experience and the research Mississippi State has done, over a three year period, we saw no increase in, uh, in weed or pest invasion. And they have actually proven that we've had some increase in beneficial uh, insects. And we had a tremendous increase in songbirds and other wildlife. I don't think that uh, the economic impact of the buffers will have any effect. We're in the early stages of this. It's going to take a while for it to, to, to work its way out to see exactly where we stand as far as the income is concerned. But I see no significant uh, decrease at this point. We don't feel that our field buffers have interfered with our income from our row crops because there are incentives 
out there to plant these field buffers and maintain them. And with just the benefits we get from increased wildlife is another incentive. And so we don't feel like income has been harmed at all. There's been no loss of income from participating in this program using the field borders. The cost to us has been minimal because the field borders were along the edges of the woods, which normally don't produce anything anyway from the woods sapping the fields. Also, in addition to that, it's helped in erosion areas along the ditches. From an economic standpoint, we've taken out 195 acres of production. But with the sign up, the cost share, and the long-term lease program, and particularly set this on some of our less productive field borders and edges, we feel like this is a win-win program for, for anybody uh, interested in, uh, in game management and erosion control and, and preservation of nature. What we hope to accomplish with the buffers is uh, number one, nesting habitat for, for new broods, uh, weeds and, uh, and insects for the young chicks as they come along, and then winter cover where they can hover up and feed on the grain fields during the winter. We've got a good habitat now, particularly for, for young chicks to, to feed on, and, uh, and we're just excited as we can be about what we're gonna have in a year from now. Since we've established field buffers and have had them for approximately five years, we have seen an increase in wildlife. We've seen a slight increase in bomb white quail. I would say we've seen a bigger increase in songbirds that occupy these field buffers and also turkeys and rabbits because it offers a very good habitat for them not only to feed in but to, as protection from their predators. As a result of putting in the uh, quail buffer program on my farm, I've seen an increase of, of quail sightings, songbird sightings, bluebirds, kingbirds, uh, loggerhead shrike. I've seen turkey broods. I've seen young fawns that have bedded up in the buffer zone. So. I'm excited about the program because of the wildlife impact that it's having on my, my farm. We've seen a significant increase in the quail population in the past four years since we've been involved in this program. Up until four years ago, you practically never saw or heard a quail. This past year, they did a quail count and we found 15 coveys on this one particular farm. What I'm trying to accomplish here is to go back to what I remember as the best days on this farm in the 50s where we had quail populations all over. You could get on your horse, follow your dogs around all day long. You had uh, uh, smaller fields, smaller pastures. You had a lot more game. And my goal is to bring it back to that, try to make it as productive as I can along with having all the recreation and entertainment that I can have and to pass this on not only to my children, but to my grandchildren and, and whoever might come down the line. I'm a second generation on this place and hopefully in the next four or five years, I'll pass it on to the fourth generation. When I was a young teenager, I really enjoyed quail hunting. It's hard to explain the thrill of a young man going quail hunting and hearing that covey rise. And the quail population had declined to the point that there just was no quail hunting going on. Through this program, we're definitely bringing the quail population back. In a few years, there will certainly be some excellent hunting for some young people in this area. Well, just about every time that I come out here with my children, I'll remind them that of the benefits of this program. And that someday that they would probably benefit more than I will because they'll be able to see the, the Bob White quail coming back to his natural habitat and all of the conservation programs that I've signed up for. Uh, I just like to see more people get involved. I just, uh, I'm sold on it. I feel that generation after generation can only benefit through this. So how do you get involved? Program sign up will run on a continuous basis until all of a state's acres have been enrolled or until December 31st, 2007, whichever comes first. All applicants must satisfy the basic eligibility and cropping history criteria for the Conservation Reserve Program. Eligible cropland must be suitably located and adaptable to the establishment of Bob White quail. Cropland does not need to be classified as highly erodible but must have been cropped at least four out of the six years between 1996 and 2001. 
Incentives for enrolling include signing incentive payments of up to $100 per acre, annual payments for the 10-year length of the contract, cost share assistance of up to 50% of the eligible reimbursable practice cost, and practice incentive payments of up to 40% of the eligible establishment cost. Upland habitat buffers are a win-win solution. They provide producers with an opportunity to meet their economic objectives while installing a conservation practice that will restore quail and other wildlife populations to their farms. When adequately informed of this opportunity, producers are readily adopting upland habitat buffers. Creating awareness and successfully delivering this conservation program will require a coordinated information campaign. It will also require a cooperative effort between FSA, NRCS, TSPs, state conservation agencies, and NGOs to deliver needed technical assistance. As more producers enroll, the best advertisement will be word of mouth as neighbors tell neighbors about the program. This trusted exchange of information will help farmers understand how upland habitat buffers fit into their production system. They'll also see how those buffers will help them accomplish economic, environmental, and wildlife habitat objectives. And as the word gets out, they'll discover that CP33 upland habitat buffers are common sense conservation.